for the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. We hold classes in the United States, Canada, and certain other foreign countries. The Lansing branch was established in 1973. The dean is Dr. Terry Welsh. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted with the title, Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted with the title God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted with the name Jesus. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that our Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings for the true and original name of our Father and His Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state He is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself, because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on the chart 
is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form can only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also at this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It is called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and the function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The primary constitutional objectives and aims of the Institute are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah. Without distinction of race, or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith, which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh, Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved. 
saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth, to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace. Our slogan is speak the truth. Talking about how Yahweh Elohim has made man in his own image and likeness, both the soul and the body, and how the respiratory system and the circulatory, circulatory system are uh, made by this pattern, and how the coronavirus actually attacks the uh, spiritual principles, or attacks physically, uh, to show how the satanic spirit attacks the spiritual principles that are life-giving in the uh, attributes of the soul that correspond with the respiratory system and the circulatory system. Um, Dr. Welch, would you? Yes, let's all bow our hearts and minds and thank Yahshua again for giving us this great opportunity to expound on his great gospel. And we hope that he will raise some souls and understanding so that we might understand him and his purpose better. Let us all say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so this vision and revelation that Yahweh has given to the Bible writers, including Moses, the Apostle John, and then to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley in 1931, uh, has just revealed how Yahweh has made everything and is operating his purpose. It even shows how the negative forces operate, such as this coronavirus, and how that manifests the spiritual negative forces of Satan and his mystery of iniquity, those de demonic spirits. Um, we're going to be reading a section in the textbooks about the respiratory system, and then there's some other. And let me give you a little bit of background and context first. Uh, first of all, <clears throat> Yahweh Elohim is the creator of the universe, and he has made everything according to himself. He is the original archetype or pattern of the universe, and he showed himself in visions to uh, Moses, John, Dr. Kinley, and explained himself by a tabernacle pattern. Now, there's 50 chapters or more of the Bible devoted to this tabernacle pattern, how it was made, and how the services or operations occurred in this pattern. So there's a lot of Bible devoted to that. It's extremely important and it's really the key of knowledge. This pattern is the tool by which Yahweh Elohim has shown how everything in the entire creation operates, including his prime creation, which is the man or the human being. And Dr. Kinley uh, showed how that the Creator is Yahweh Elohim Yahshua, or the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, in one embodiment. In other words, He is Spirit as uh, abstract source and substance, which took on a shape and form, like a bodily shape and form, and then He manifested concretely as Yahshua the Messiah. He made the man like himself or in his own image, and the man is made spirit, soul, and body to correspond with the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are displayed in the most holy place, holy place, in court round about of the tabernacle. This is general overview, and we'll get down to some specifics, but this is vitally important to understand. So, when he made man spirit, soul, and body, he made man to display himself by this pattern, and the spirit is his spirit, and then the soul, and, well, and, I, and to shortcut this, the spirit is pure principle, it's the divine attributes, and those attributes then become the source and the substance of everything, including a person's soul, and a person's body because really those attributes become the source and substance that materialized into the physical matter that forms this entire universe. So uh, 
<clears throat> those attributes that we're talking about are the divine attributes of Yahweh, which are primarily intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge, beauty, love, and justice, foundation, power, and strength. And you can see that they become organized in three groups of three or three triads in a very precise, very specific formation or relationship. That is a set position. So they took on a shape and form. And those attributes then uh, become the source and the substance of everything in the creation, including the spirit that forms man, the soul that is the same attributes as these attributes here, or as far as in the shape and the form, and then the physical body is made of the same material. Now, to look at more details. The soul being formed of these attributes has again these attributes in the th triads, the three parts. Intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge, which are shown back here in the embodiment of Yahweh Elohim, and he made man like himself. That intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge is what makes up a person's mind. And mind is actually another word for soul. And then there's beauty, love, and justice here, just like there's beauty, love, and justice here in the person's soul. And those are the heart of the person. And a heart is actually also used as another word for soul. And then there's the principles, the attributes of foundation, power, and strength here, just like foundation, power, and strength here, and those manifest in the will of the soul. So the cognitive part of the person's soul is their mind, the emotive part, and the cognitive part has thoughts, the emotive part is this heart, in other words, the feelings and emotions that are there. And then the operative or action carrying out part is from a man's will. Okay? And so this is the threefold formation of the soul in the image of Yahweh Elohim. And this pattern shows the same thing. Uh, real briefly, there are three um, vessels in the most holy place. Um, and they correspond to the intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge. They correspond to the systems in the physical body, which I'll get to in a minute. But these are made into a single unit, the Ark of the Covenant. So there are three vessels here in the most holy place of the tabernacle, which are made into a single unit. These three vessels are the cherubim of glory, the mercy seat of the Ark, and then the Ark proper itself. And they're formed into a single unit. They correspond with the intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge in the Godhead or supernal nature, which are the attributes that are forming the mind of a person's soul. Then you have the, in the holy place, the middle compartment of the tabernacle, you have three vessels, which are the altar of incense, which has four sides, the uh, lampstand, which has seven branches, and then the uh, table of shoe bread, which has four corners. And so, those correspond, those vessels correspond with the attributes of beauty, love, and justice in the Godhead or supernal nature, paternal nature of Yahweh. And they, those attributes form the heart of a person. And there are physical uh, uh, material parts of a person's functioning, which I'll get to in a minute, that correspond with this. Um, and then in the court roundabout of the tabernacle, you have three primary vessels, which are the um, uh, holy anointing oil, copper horn, and then the brazen laver, which had water for washing, and the brazen altar, which was used for the sacrifices. So these three vessels here then correspond with the attributes of foundation, power, and strength in the paternal nature or Godhead. Those form the will of a person's soul, and now the body is made by the same exact pattern. We're going to get down into that in more detail and how the things in the body then correspond with these attributes in the soul and what the spiritual significance is of physical illness caused by the uh, coronavirus and other things as compared with the 
spiritual illnesses that are caused by satanic spirits, okay? So I hope you get the, the basic correlation here, okay? So now, when we compare the soul in the physical body, you have the head cavity of the physical body, the chest cavity, and the abdominal cavity. And the head cavity corresponds with the mind of the soul. The chest cavity corresponds with the heart of the soul. And the abdominal cavity corresponds with the will of the soul. Again, these all go back to co compare with the most holy place, holy place and court roundabout of the tabernacle. And the attributes of intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge in the soul, which are the attributes of Yahweh and Yahweh Elohim, correspond with the nervous, reproductive, and endocrine systems, the physiological systems of the soul that correspond with these attributes here. So I'll say it again. Intelligence, wisdom, and knowledge in the soul correspond with the attributes or the, the physiological systems of the nervous system, reproductive system, and endocrine system in the body. In the soul, you have the heart with the attributes of beauty, love, and justice, they correspond with the physiological systems in the chest cavity of the body or this chest region of the respiratory system, the circulatory system, and the excretory system. And we're going to be dealing in much more detail with the respiratory system and circulatory system, just like we will with the attribute of beauty and love, which they compare with. We'll be doing that in a few minutes. Then, in the will of the soul, you have the attributes of foundation, power, and strength, and they correspond with the systems, the physiology of the body, of the digestive system, the muscular system, and the skeletal system. Okay, now we've gone over more details about this in past sessions, and you're welcome to tune in to other uh, YouTube recorded sessions to get more details, and you're also welcome to write in uh, in fact, you can email me personally if you wish at tjwelsh at sbcglobal.net and we'll be happy to correspond with you or simply go uh, to our website idmrlansing.com. Anyway, so now, as we said, in the chest cavity, you have this, this center, the central area of the respiratory system and the circulatory system. The respiratory system, of course, goes throughout the body. There is respiration throughout the entire body um, with the blood going to the cells and the cells uh, taking in the oxygen that the blood carries and giving off carbon dioxide and waste. But the center of the respiratory system is the lungs. And as we'll see, of course, the lungs are the area that is most particularly attacked by the coronavirus as with many viruses. Now, that respiratory system corresponds with the attribute of beauty. Beauty is invisible, as with all these attributes. So Yahweh gave us something physical in our bodies in order to understand better how these invisible attributes really uh, operate and exist in our soul and really for the purpose of understanding him and these attributes as aspects of his own being. So um, now the uh, respiratory system corresponds with the attribute of beauty and we're going to read in the textbook more about this. So I'm just hitting it, quitting it right this moment. The circulatory system deals with the attribute of love. It compares with the attribute of love and the excretory system compares with the attribute of justice. And we're going to be concentrating on respiratory and circulatory system, beauty and love here, okay? Now, the respiratory system centered at the lungs basically inspires the circulatory system. And the attribute of beauty inspires love. Someone sees something that is beautiful to them. And that's kind of a, uh, you know, what's the word? It's a kind of an invisible almost... Um, uh, vague is not the word I'm looking for, but it's kind of an abstract thing. Because to one person, something that's beautiful 
is not terribly appealing to somebody else. But we find beauty in things we see, beauty in things we hear. Um, we find beauty in ideas and thoughts and dreams and a number of different things. But the, what beauty is, is an appeal to the uh, sense of what someone loves, of what their desires are, of what they find awe-inspiring and appealing. Okay? So the respiratory system literally inspires the circulatory system or brings the oxygen, which represents the spirit, into the blood of the circulatory system. Just like beauty inspires love and awe. Okay? So now let's read in the Elohim book here um, about this and uh, you can tell us where you're reading exactly and we'll kind of read right on through most of it. I won't make a lot of comments. Um, I'll interject a few things here and there. The Respiratory System. That's volume 3, page 40, or 36 in the Elohim books. Respiration is one of the most vital functions that is carried on in the physical body. It is synonymous with life itself. For without this process of inhaling air into the lungs, man could not exist. Through the process of breathing, man is constantly in intimate contact with his environment. Man lives within, um, within an atmosphere and his self-same atmosphere is within the man. If one would liken this atmosphere to divine spirit, which is Yahweh, John 4, 24, which is without descriptive shape or form, and in which we live and move and have our being, Acts 17, 28, then see this atmosphere or air inhaled into the lungs where it is absorbed into the bloodstream and carried to every cell and tissue of the physical body with the result that the inhaled air spirit has the same shape and form of the physical body one would have profound tangible evidence of a spiritual body residing inside the physical body. Okay, let me pause for just a minute. Um, now, he talks about the respiratory system and then inhaling. Well, actually, the inhaling, another word for inhaling, is to inspire, literally. That is to take in the spirit. And when one exhales, they expire. And, of course, uh, one term for death is expiring. In other words, that's the last expiration. Okay? And so the point is that when we take in that invisible air, we are taking in something that's a symbol of the spirit. And when we uh, are given life by Yahweh, who is spirit, that is beautiful, and that inspires us, okay? It's just a beautiful thing, the way he does this. Um, and I'm going to go to, into this tabernacle briefly as a comparison here. This, again, would correspond with... I want to make this a little easier to see. I think I can take these now and just move this over. So here, this attribute of beauty would correspond with the five-sided altar of incense here in the tabernacle. That corresponds with the respiratory system, and we'll see more correlations of these in a minute. Okay? So I just want you to see this um, uh, to set it up. Anyway, I'll let her read this. Um, and he did mention this that when we take in that air, that it goes throughout the body in the circulatory system, okay? And the, it forms an invisible presence, uh, like an invisible man. It takes on a shape and a form. That's what Yahweh Elohim did, was he came out of pure spirit and took on a shape and a form. 
And this is one manifestation that we do have an invisible spirit man or person inside of our physical body. Now there's actually at least three manifestations of that same principle when it comes to these physiological systems. The respiratory system working with the circulatory system gives that oxygen representing the Holy Spirit throughout the whole physical body taking on shape and form. The nervous system is very similar because the nerves, although centered in the head, go throughout the entire body and they form kind of uh, electrochemical impulses. There's a flow of nerves, both uh, afferent nerves and efferent nerves. In other words, those that are afferent bring impulses back to the brain. Those that are efferent bring impulses away from the brain. And the circulatory system, which here has veins and arteries. The arteries carry blood away from the heart and the veins carry blood back toward the heart. So there is a flow of electrochemical energy that's like the, a, an energy man that's inside this body. The circulatory system has the man made of the air, the oxygen elements. And then down here in this court roundabout, you have the skeletal system. And the skeletal system is the solid bone material. And that solid bone material goes throughout the entire body. And so again, it takes on the shape and form of the whole physical body, but that is the most solid and tangible of all three. And then you have increasing levels of abstraction as you go up. Anyway, point is, these are three manifestations in the physical body of the principle of spirit, Yahweh Elohim's or spirit taking on shape and form. So you have spirit, soul and body. You were made up that way. And we're dealing more of the details here with the respiratory system, but you inspire and expire. Take in the spirit and give it out. All right, please continue reading. Furthermore, since the physical body could not survive without this air, spirit dwelling therein, it points up the superior it points up the superiority and exceeding excellence of the spirit, spiritual body over the physical body. Okay. I cannot leave out this particular point without bringing into focus another vital point. Since all the cells and tissues of the physical body give off carbon dioxide, a waste product, this gaseous waste material also takes the shape and form of our physical bodies. Mm -hmm and therefore is indisputable proof of an evil or satanic spirit abiding within us also. Thus, the air or atmosphere which we inhale denotes the righteous spirit, spirit, spirit body within, and the carbon dioxide denotes the unrighteous spiritual body residing within. Okay, let me make a comment on this. Now, um, <clears throat> What this really shows is that in the process of the Holy Spirit coming into a person, what that does is drive out the satanic spirit. And that is really what happens in principle at the lungs with the oxygen coming in and displacing the carbon dioxide or the waste uh, in the blood vessels where they're at the lungs. And so, in fact, the carbon dioxide, the, the atomic number of carbon is six. Six represents the flesh because the fleshly man was made the sixth day of Moses' vision. That's what's recorded in Genesis, the first chapter. And the sixth step of the tabernacle was at the second veil that represents the flesh. And so that um, carbon has the atomic number six, but the atomic number of oxygen is eight. And perfection is seven. So Yahweh's number there is seven or perfection. And when he uh, elevates it, raises it up one, showing that the resurrection is in Yahshua, his son, then his number is eight. And when uh, Satan is uh, diminished or cast out, 
or cast down, his number is six. Okay, and so the carbon dioxide is cast out or driven out from the red blood cells uh, in the lungs of the respiratory system by the oxygen that's coming in. Okay, and the oxygen then displaces, casts out the carbon dioxide. So it's showing the principle of the Holy Spirit casting out the satanic spirit. Okay, um, okay. Uh, go ahead and read. The Apostle Paul wrote, For I delight in the law of Yahweh, righteous, after the inward man, but I see another law, unrighteous, in my member, warring against me, against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Mm -hmm. Romans seven twenty two through twenty three. Mm -hmm. No one can deny the presence of this waste material in his body, and likewise, no one can deny the presence of an evil spirit within our bodies. It is by the preaching of the true gospel of Yahshua the Messiah, baptizing in the name, that this evil or negative spirit is cast down. Now, that's what he says there, that it's by the preaching of the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah, preaching in his name, that this evil or satanic spirit is cast down, or actually cast out. Now, I want to show you how that is clearly manifest in the physical body, and that it's his name that is the power for this. So when you compare the respiratory system, what's the center of the respiratory system? That's the lungs. Compares with the attribute of beauty, what does it compare with here? Compares with the altar of incense, which has five sides, okay? Now the priest would light incense here uh, periodically, and what that would do that incense would be a sweet smelling savor and what it would do would be overcome the other uh, stench so to speak um, because Yahweh said that uh, when Israel started sinning and they had to offer up sacrifices uh, he said that their sacrifices were a stench in his nostrils um, and, you know it's not that cooking meat smells bad but what it is was the fact that they had to do this because they sinned. And so that sin, and they say he said their sacrifices were a stench in his nostrils. Well, that was down here. But the priest would like the incense here, and Yahweh's throne was up here. And so this intercess, uh, intercession here with the incense would end up overcoming that uh, negative smell um, f that was depicting sin. Okay, now... Our respiratory system in the lungs, of course, in order for our respiratory system to work, what do we have to do? What's the operation? We have to breathe, right? All right. Just like the priest had to light the incense, it did no good if it just sat there. It had to be lit and burned in order to work. Well, same thing is true with the lungs, the respiratory system. We have to actually uh, inspire and expire or inhale and exhale in order for um, the, the, the lungs to work. And this breathing process is a testimony to the very power of the name of Yahweh. And uh, when we breathe, we inhale and exhale and you normally don't hear it. It's a silent operation. But, you know, if you're under duress, so to speak, you've got to run up that hill. You've got to get away from the dog. <laughs> you know, you're going to pursue whatever goal you've got. You're going to be moving up those stairs. Then you're going to start calling on the name of Yahweh in earnest because you're going to be going... <sighs> is necessary in order for you to get the oxygen representing the Holy Spirit and cast out the carbon dioxide which is a symbol of the satanic spirit and we must call upon the name of Yahweh and in the scriptures he says whosoever calleth upon the name of Yahweh shall be saved so and by the way that is considered one 
of the two main vital signs or life signs that we look for in a person. And the, uh, in fact, and I've taught CPR now, what, 35 years or longer. And we, of course, look for breathing as the sign or as a major sign of life in a person. We have to check to make sure that a person is breathing. And even if a person um, uh, may still be moving somewhat and, and physically alive on some level, if they're not breathing, they're not going to stay alive very long. They have to call upon the name of Yahweh or breathe to live. Okay? And so that's it. Now that uh, oxygen goes into the uh, bloodstream in the lungs and then it goes over to the heart. And the heart, of course, pumps the blood throughout the entire body. And if you put your head on your lover's chest, you'll hear the heart beat. And if you're not totally too, too close, it'll sound like two beats, which again is Yahweh, 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 Yahweh. And it's that power of the name of Yahweh that makes it operate. But if you hear closer, like if you use a stethoscope or um, I'm trying to think of the instruments that they use in the hospital where they really get the, the sound going, uh, then you actually will hear the, the rush of the blood, the flow, and it sounds like Yahshua, 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 Yahshua. And really, we are saved in the name of Yahshua. And so Yahweh has testimony to that in our physical bodies. Now, the heart beating and the lungs breathing, those are the two main vital signs or life signs of the body. And let me tell you, when they quit, you're dead. And now, this virus, of course, attacks that. And really what it's trying to do is silence and put out the name Yahweh by attacking the lungs and making it so that you can no longer actually breathe properly and that you can't get the Holy Spirit even if you do breathe. In other words, you can't get the oxygen entering the blood and get the carbon dioxide out. Satanic spirits don't want to leave. And if you get your lungs all clogged up with the inflammation and so forth, uh, that, that is caused by these, uh, cor you know, the coronavirus and so forth. These, uh, that inflammation in the lungs makes it so you can't get the oxygen in and pushing the carbon dioxide out, which is showing the resistance of the satanic spirits to being uh, cast out by the Holy Spirit. All right. Um, anyway, go ahead and read further, please. The Apostle John wrote, If we say that we have not sinned, we make him, Yahshua, a liar, mm -hmm. and his word is not in us. 1 John 1 and 10. The breathing in of good wholesome air, the true gospel of Yahshua the Messiah, dispels the carbon dioxide, the devil or ignorance of Yahweh, from our tabernacles. The respiratory system is, set, is situated in the middle compartment, holy place of the tabernacle of the physical body. Anatomically, it consists of three lobes of lung tissue on the right side and two lobes on the left. Mm -hmm. Technically, one thinks of the heart being situated mostly on the left side as being the missing lung or the missing lung lobe on the left. Then there would be three lobes on either side. Furthermore, there is a sort of no man's land. Uh, I got to have help with this. Mediastinum. Mediastinum, mm -hmm. situated between <laughs> both the right and left lungs. Mm -hmm. The word mediastinum means standing in the middle mm -hmm. or standing between. Mm -hmm. And it is an area that is virtually free of any bacteria, contaminants, or germs. 
therefore viewing the respiratory apparatus as three lobes on the right and three lobes on the left, including the heart, with the mediastinum between them, we find an exact copy or duplicate of the Ark of the Covenant in the most holy place of the tabernacle. There was a cherubim of glory on the one side of the Ark of the Covenant and a cherubim of glory on the other side of the Ark of the Covenant with the cloud or invisible presence of Yahweh dwelling between. Exodus 25, 18 and 22. Likewise, <laughs> the brain being situated in the most holy place of the tabernacle of the phys physical body must have one cere cerebral hemisphere, cerebral, cerebral yeah. hemisphere, mm -hmm. half of the, say that again, cerebral, cerebral on one side and one cerebral hemisphere on the other side mm -hmm. with the corpus callosum and or commissure of the brain situate situated between them mm -hmm. this exact <laughs> this exact copy and copying of the structure found in the most holy place and the holy place of both our physical body and the mosaic tab tabernacle, which is the pattern, Exodus 25 and 40, proves and vindicates that Elohim is the express image of Yahweh the Father, Hebrew 1, 1 through 3, and therefore are one and the same. Okay, now uh, let me mention something here. Uh, as you can tell, I'm no artist, <laughs> okay? I'm trying to diagram something here just so you can see. I wish I had a good drawing or picture of this that he's describing. But if this is your brain inside your skull, and this is then your neck region right here, and of course you're going to have your mouth and nose and so forth, then you come down through this part. This is your bronchial, this is your bronchial, uh, bronchioles that come down here and then your your lungs have three lobes on each side actually they only have three lobes on the right side they have two lobes on the left side and I'll get to the difference in a minute as to what happens but um, here where this lobe would be um, there's actually two uh, organs, but primarily in adults, what you have is the heart uh, taking up this entire area right here, and that heart goes in there in the same position as one lobe of the lungs would be, okay? But in either case, what you've got is a tree, a branching tree coming down from your neck down and then you've got a branching tree going from your neck up because with the nerves remember we talked about the nervous system is centered in the head those nerves then go up the spinal cord into the head and the all those nerves billions of nerves or millions of nerves in your brain branch off from there and form a tree but in particular um, there, there's something very unique in particular the brain also has what they call cranial nerves and there are 12 pair of cranial nerves and then when you come down in the, uh, remember we talked about the bone structure of the man, the, the, the skeletal system. When you come down in this part of the body, you have 12 pair of ribs. So that's part of the skeletal. So you've got uh, a tree on either side of your neck and you've got 12 manner of fruit, so to speak, on either side of the 
a neck which would be like a, a veil which corresponds with the river Jordan in the migratory pattern which I'd have to show you in another chart. Um, anyway, we'll maybe talk a little bit more about this and, and you can laugh at my drawing but I hope you get at least the idea of what's there. Okay, uh, please go ahead and read. Philip the disciple saith unto him, Rabbi, show us the Father, and it suffices us. Yahshua said unto him, Have I been so long time with you, with you? And yet hast thou not known me, Philip? He that hath seen me hath seen the Father. And how sayest thou then, Show us the Father? John fourteen eight through nine. Mm -hmm. The holy place of the tabernacle displayed a golden candlestick, one on one side, a golden table of shewbread on the other side, and the golden, golden altar of incense situated above and between, as is the most holy place, Yahweh the Father, so is the holy place, Elohim the son of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. So here's that altar of incense, the seven branch lampstand, and the table of shoe bread over here. Okay, And this, by the way, corresponds somewhat with <laughs> this very, very, very crude drawing. Okay, um, if, if, if you look at this, the five uh, sided altar of incense corresponds with the five lobes of the lungs, which uh, are in your chest cavity. Okay? The heart here, which is slightly to the left, it's actually center uh, mass, but tilted over because it fills in that one side there, to the left, um, it has four chambers, which corresponds with the four corners of the table of shoe bread, which is slightly off on this left side. Okay? Left, not as us facing it, you know. Uh, and so then coming off from the heart, you have a big blood vessel. And again, please laugh at my drawing, but <laughs> you have a great big blood vessel that comes up and then goes down the entire body. And that blood vessel is called the aorta. Well, I say it don't get down the entire body, it goes down in toward the legs. But it comes up and it's three parts, an ascending aorta, an arch, and then a descending aorta goes into the abdomen. And um, this is the primary blood vessel that brings blood from the heart to every place in the body because the other vessels branch off from there, the other arteries branch off from here, and there are seven primary branches, three pair, and one branch that's not paired, it's unique to itself, it's unmatched, uh, that come off this aorta that really diminish or take most of the blood away from the aorta um, and uh, when you come through the ascending aorta and the arch. And those seven branches, okay, correspond with the seven branches of, of the, uh, uh, of the lampstand here in the tabernacle. And I've got another chart that probably shows this a little bit better. Um, but anyway, uh, go ahead and read. The respiratory system also presents another very interesting phenomena. The trachea or wind windpipe courses downward from the neck and divides into the right and left branch, bronchus, and then each further subdivides into smaller branches, bronch, uh, bronch, uh, how do you say that? Bronchioles. Bronchioles, resembling an inverted or upside down tree. Yeah, I guess I already mentioned this. I kind of got ahead of him in the reading. That's this part here that's this upside down tree. Okay, please read. Throughout this tree and are an upward number of air sacs, which are attached to smaller bronchioles as fruit 
on a tree. Mm -hmm. So in other words, when you get down into these lobes of the lungs, the, the, the tubes, the little bronchioles, go down and end up in tiny little air sacs, uh, which are called alveoli. And those air sacs then are very, very thin. And the blood vessels go, that go into the heart are, are, are exposed right there on that tissue. And that's where the oxygen comes in. And the oxygen will then displace the carbon dioxide that is in those blood vessels that have been carried, you know, carbon dioxide back toward the lungs. And it displaces the carbon dioxide and the oxygen attaches to those red blood cells. Okay? And it happens at those little tiny alveoli. So those alveoli have to be supple. They have to be um, well, well exposed to the air and to the blood vessels. And if you get congestion in there, a bunch of mucus or anything else that causes a tremendous amount of inflammation that doesn't allow the air to come through into the blood or doesn't allow the blood to flow, uh, you know, thoroughly right up to the edge of where the, the, the paper thin tissue is, then what happens is you can't get oxygen in and get carbon dioxide out. And even if you're <sighs> trying to pant for breath, you can't quote unquote catch your breath. In other words, you're not getting the benefit of it. Okay? And that is what happens with these uh, viruses and illnesses that attack the lungs. Um, they, they, they stop this exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. Okay? And the coronavirus does this by causing a tremendous amount of inflammation in the lungs there. Uh, please continue. Throughout this tree are untold, an untold number of air sacs, mm -hmm. which are attached to smaller bronchioles as fruit on a tree. Mm -hmm. These little fruit-like attachments more closely resemble bunches of grapes hanging on a vine. Mm -hmm. Yahshua, the, Yahshua, the son of Yahweh, said, I am the true vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit he taketh away, and every branch that beareth fruit he purgeth it, that it may bring forth fruit, more, bring fruit, bring, <laughs> bring <laughs> forth one. more fruit. Right, right. More John right. 15, 1 through 2. Right. John the Revelator heard the angel say, thrust in any sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, mm -hmm. for her grapes are fully ripe. Mm -hmm. Revelation 14, 18. Mm -hmm. And in another place, John said, And when he, the angel, opened the fifth seal, mm -hmm. I saw under the altar, altar of incense, in, in the holy place, the souls of them that were slain for the word of Yahweh and for the testimony which they held. So in other words, if you go back to this tabernacle pattern again, remember... The lungs and the heart are in the holy place of the physical body, and that corresponds with the uh, altar of incense and the uh, table of shoe bread and lampstand here in, in the holy place of the tabernacle. And so he said he saw, uh, at, the, by the way, the angel, the fifth seal being opened. There's seven steps in the tabernacle, and the fifth step is the holy place. Um, the first step is the gate, second step is the altar of uh, sacrifice, third step is the laver, fourth step is the door, fifth step is the holy place, sixth step is the second veil, seventh step is the most holy place. So he, he's talking about this angel being the fifth seal, and then that's like the fifth step of the tabernacle, and he saw under the altar, the altar of incense, these souls of men. Now the priest stored his garments for glory and beauty uh, under this altar of incense, or you know, in the yeah, un under the top of the altar of incense inside. And 
on the uh, on the priest garments, what he would do would be have uh, on that vesture when he put it on, he would have two stones here uh, that had the names of the twelve tribes of Israel. That's on his shoulders. He would have a breastplate with twelve stones representing again the 12 tribes of Israel and then on the hem of the garment he would have pomegranates which have just multiple multiple little hidden seeds inside and what those do all of these show the souls of men that Yahshua who is the true high priest would end up saving and taking on and presenting to the father uh, the souls that he has saved. And you see the garments for glory and beauty on the priest here in the most holy place. Because he put them on, he stored them here, put them on before he went in the most holy place on the third trip. And then the, they were here. So he saw under the altar the souls of men which correspond with all these souls that I was showing you about the stones and the pomegranates being just folded up and laid at rest under the altar. In other words, he left them there until one day out of the year, and they just were at rest there until one specific day of the year when he went in on his third trip. And so they're just there waiting. They're at rest, just like souls uh, of uh, men and, and that have died and been uh, buried into Yahshua the Messiah. Those souls are at rest. Okay? waiting for the universal revelation of Yahshua, which Yahshua will then take them and uh, go into the Father or go into glorification, and they will be glorified in his embodiment. Anyway, please read. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Yahweh, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood? on them that dwell on the earth. Mm -hmm. Revelation 6, 9 through 10. The branching configuration of the trachea or windpipe and the bronchi or bronchi, bron bronchiolus. <laughs> <laughs> the bronchi go into the bronchioles, yes. And bronchioles uh -huh. represent the tree of life, right. which is Yahshua the Messiah, the son of Yahweh. And the air sacs represent the fruit of the earth, Mm -hmm. which he has begotten through his, through his sacrifice of himself, mm -hmm. which is all of us that are saved, mm -hmm. a countless number. Mm -hmm. And furthermore, Yahshua said, When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Matthew 24 and 15. Mm -hmm. So we have undeniable proof that Yahshua has saved untold numbers of souls, and we see them standing just where he told them to stand, in the holy place, mm -hmm. as witnessed by, by our own air sacs mm -hmm. of our lungs. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed, and each of them is filled with the Spirit, Holy Spirit, as is manifested by each of the air sacs being filled with air or oxygen, mm -hmm. which represents the spirit. Mm -hmm. And further proof is this. The neck region of our physical body corresponds with the second veil of the Mosaic Tabernacle. So I kind of de demonstrated that here. I know I might, again, my drawing, I apologize for. But this area here, like the neck region below the head, corresponds with this second veil, which went between the most holy place of the tabernacle and the holy place. The holy place corresponds with the chest cavity. The most holy place corresponds with the head cavity. Person. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, go ahead and read, please. Which was ripped out or rent in twain when Yahshua was from the grave, mm -hmm. an immortal or quickening spirit. Mm -hmm. Matthew twenty-seven fifty-one, mm -hmm. First Corinthians fifteen forty-five through fifty-three. The Apostle Paul referred to this veil as the veil of the flesh, mm -hmm. Hebrews 10 and 20. Mm -hmm. In the migratory pattern, the second veil is represented by the River Jordan. So in retrospect, the neck 
region of the physical body, the second veil of the tabernacle, Mm -hmm. the river Jordan in the Israel's journey to Canaan's land. Which is shown right here on this chart. They, they, They journeyed from Egypt through the wilderness of Sinai and then on into Canaan land or the promised land. They had to pass through the Red Sea to get from Egypt to the wilderness. That's a body of water that was divided showing a veil, and then they had to pass through the Jordan River to get into the Promised Land or Canaan Land, and that water was rolled back or divided. And so he's talking about here the Jordan River corresponding to the neck region of the person's body, corresponding to the second veil in the tabernacle. And it said when Yahshua uh, uh, was uh, crucified um, and, and raised, then what happened was that veil in the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and it says Yahshua made a new and living way for us through the veil, that is to say his flesh. The reason that's a new and living way is because under the Old Testament, that veil was a solid curtain that went across, and the priest had to go around the veil in order to get in. But what Yahshua did is make a quick way, a new and living way through the veil. And so he parted that veil just like he parted the Jordan River to go on in um, and so forth. So um, go ahead and read, please. And the flesh are all synonymous and have the same meaning. Mm -hmm. Consequently, the Apostle John wrote, in the midst of the street of it and on either side of the river was was there the tree of life which bare 12 manner of fruits okay revelations 22 and 2 mm-hmm. he was referring to having the holy ghost while yet in the flesh walking around on this earth plane on the other side of the river and to those who have the holy spirit who have departed out of the flesh on the other side of the river. So in other words, whether you're in a physical body or have died and gone on, if you've received the Holy Spirit, then you've received the fruit of the Spirit, and that goes with you on either side of the river or the flesh, whether you're still in the flesh or whether you're out of the flesh, whether you're on this side of the river, that side of the river, this side of the river, that side of the river, this side of the veil, that side of the veil, either way, If you've received the Holy Spirit, you have that fruit. He talked about 12 manner of fruit, and I tried to kind of mention earlier that in the head cavity of a person, there's those uh, 12 pair of cranial nerves. In the chest cavity, you have the 12 pair of ribs. And again, he's showing that tree of life here uh, depicted by the lungs and the the bronchioles and, and, and so forth here with the respiratory system, and then in the brain also. So on either side, you've got the same principle. Please continue. Yes, the word of Yahweh is in us, and we in him. Mm -hmm. That is, on either side of the river, the flesh. Mm -hmm. Witness, therefore, the respiratory tree on one side of the neck region, the river, Mm -hmm. and the branching nervous system, it branches from the spinal cord entering the brain mm, mm-hmm. into the smaller and smaller outshoots, just as a tree mm-hmm. on the other side of the neck region. Mm-hmm. And one has a definite confirmation of what John said on the Isle of Patmos. Oh yes, we did not tell you of the fruit on the branching nerve tree, which makes up one's brain. Well, it, the fruit, is the nerve cells themselves, which are called astrocytes, star cells, because they resemble stars. Did not Yahweh Elohim promise Abraham that he would multiply his seed as the stars of heaven and as the sands of the sea? Mm-hmm. Genesis twenty-two seventeen. Would you like to try to count the cells of your brain? <laughs> These cells typify the heavenly host of angels, which are on either side of the river, the Mm -hmm. flesh, Mm -hmm. and which also make up the body of Yahshua the Messiah, which is the true church. The Apostle Paul wrote 
that the purpose of Yahweh is that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Yahshua the Messiah, both that are in heaven, the angels represented by the astrocytes or brain cells or of our body, mm-hmm. and which are on earth, those yet living in the flesh with the Holy Ghost in them represented by our body. Okay. Now let me mention, we've already talked about this a little bit here. Um, but again, remember I mentioned the high priest had the garments for glory and beauty uh, that he stored here. But when he went into the most holy place the third time, which would be at the time when Yahweh Elohim or Yahshua appeared and revealed himself in this brightness and glory here, that's when he put on these garments for glory and beauty and the uh, stones with the 12 names up here represent the 12 tribes of Israel, but those 12 tribes of Israel on a larger context represent the 12 order of angels. So those are the higher up 12 orders of angels. Then he made an old covenant with the 12 tribes of Israel, but then later on he brought in innumerable souls of Gentiles and so forth under the new covenant and that's like those uh, seeds that are in the pomegranates on the hem of the garment. So they are appearing with the high priest or with Yahshua, who's not what the high priest symbolizes, that's who he symbolizes, when he is presented to Yahweh and glorified. And they are glorified together with him, that light of Yahweh Elohim appearing there shines on them and, and they reflect his glory. They're redounding uh, with thanksgiving to the glory of Yahweh and they're participating in his glory and reflect it back to him, just magnifying him in his glory or brightness. But please read. Those yet living in the flesh with the Holy Ghost in them represented by the grape-like air sacs of the lungs, even in him. Ephesians 1 and 10. Mm -hmm. Oh yes, the astrocytes or star cells have the spirit in them as represented by the electrical impulses mediated by nerve cells. Mm -hmm. There is yet another phenomenon, and there are many more, for Yahweh is limitless, of the respiratory system that must be elaborated upon. Everyone is aware of the fact that the vital capacity of the, of the lungs, the amount of air held in the lungs, can be increased by the practice of deep breathing daily and the avoidance of certain detrimental habits as smoking, etc. Mm-hmm. In such cases of increased vital capacity, the number of functioning air sacs is increased. We have already explained what it means spiritually to take in or breathe good wholesome air. It is synonymous to the receiving of the Holy Ghost or true gospel into our bodies. Mm -hmm. Therefore, this act of increasing the number of air sacs by breathing deeply indicates that daily the true church or body of Yahshua is being added unto as the gospel is preached throughout the world. Mm -hmm. Yahshua said, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world or age for witness unto all nations and then shall the end come. Matthew 24 and 14. And Luke the physician, physician wrote, And they, the apostles, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singing of heart, praising Yahweh and having favor with all the people. And Elohim added to the congregation daily such as should be saved. Mm -hmm. Acts 2. 46 through 47. Mm-hmm. Respi- respiration is inspiration and just as good as and just as a good breath of air 
is exhilarating to the physical body and nourishes it, then also the reception of the real truth into our hearts and minds is the divine inspiration which perks up and enlivens our spiritual body. Mm -hmm. We do not breathe. If we do not breathe, we die. If we receive the real truth, if we receive not the real truth, we are dead walking around on this earth plane. Now let me mention this, okay? We've already talked about how that the physical body follows the same exact tabernacle pattern as the soul. And this soul has corresponding parts. And remember, the respiratory system corresponds with the attribute of beauty. Circulatory system corresponds with the attribute of love. The respiratory system, or lungs, actually literally inspire the circulatory system or the blood of the circulatory system and give the, the oxygen or Holy Spirit there. The beauty of Yahweh is is seen when he reveals himself to you. And hopefully, even just in these examples that we've been giving, these correlations and the, the words that are, that are written in the scriptures and the, the vision that you can see had to be given by a higher power than me, a higher power than Dr. Harris that wrote that section of the book or Dr. Kinley who had him do this and had the charts made up. This had to come from a much higher power. That had to come from the creator of the universe. And if you can see that, if you can see that this is beyond the, the, the mundane, beyond the power of a man, beyond what we are aware of by physical means, um, that, that, that what we're exploring is spiritual things that are eternal, Hopefully you are seeing how beautiful this is that Yahweh has given these wonderful mysteries and encoded them in his creation and is manifesting those things so that our souls can be inspired by his beauty. Okay? And that will hopefully inspire love. We love him because he first loved us. Yahweh loves us he has given his beauty, he's shown the beauty of his salvation and his love for us if we receive it, just like if as our lungs actually receive oxygen in the air, then we receive this beauty, it inspires him, uh, or his love, I should say, in us. And it causes us to be alive spiritually, it causes our soul to live and live eternally. Just like when you receive the oxygen in the lungs and it actually goes into the blood, then that is like the Holy Spirit uh, in a comparison, in an allegory. So this is our soul in operation and the Spirit of Yahweh is what is causing all of this to be formed and to function this way. But if our respiratory system, our lungs, for example, just get all clogged up, and if our blood cannot flow right into those grape sacs, those alveoli, and, and, and take the oxygen in from the air and get rid of the carbon dioxide, our whole body becomes toxic and will die. It will become acidic and it will, uh, it will, we will die physically if we cannot get the oxygen in and the carbon dioxide out. And we will die spiritually and stay dead spiritually if we cannot get the Holy Spirit, if we don't receive the Holy Spirit, if we're not responsive to the Holy Spirit, giving us these beautiful revelations, if we say, eh, that's cute, I don't care. That's like saying, well, oxygen is important, but I don't care. I'm not going to breathe. I'm going to clog up my lungs and I'm not going to be able to take it in. I don't care. What you're saying is you don't care for life. 
And if you don't care for your physical life, hopefully at least you care for your spiritual life. But that's what this is all about. Please read. The Apostle Paul wrote, But she that liveth in pleasure, sensual or carnal or physical delights, mm -hmm. is dead while she liveth. 1 Timothy 5 and 6. Yeah. So in other words, if all we're paying attention to is the physical and we never see the spiritual, and we don't care about the spiritual, all we care about is the physical, living in physical pleasure instead of taking pleasure in the spirit and seeing the beauty of Yahweh and being, having love inspired, we die. Coronavirus causes tremendous inflammation in the lungs, causes us to be unable, causes people to be, and it does many other things too, but uh, many of these viruses that attack the lungs uh, uh, make it so that basically you just can't get the oxygen in or the carbon dioxide out. That's like saying that you're resistant to receiving the Holy Spirit and getting rid of the satanic spirit. We've got to be willing to receive the Holy Spirit and willing to get rid of the satanic spirit. We have to be willing to change from being carnally minded to spiritually minded. We have to be willing to value the things of the spirit and not just the sensual and physical and carnal things of this world. So I hope that's helpful to you. Uh, I sincerely pray the very best for your soul throughout all eternity. May Yahweh bless you in these things. Receive them. Praise Yahshua. Now we'll have a doxology. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory, dominion, majesty, and power, both before all time, now, and ever. Let us say, Hallelujah. Hallelujah.